One of the meta principles that I discovered, actually I discovered it not just three years ago, I discovered it when I was 15 years of age. Someone had told me about the, a group of people called the Rosicrucians, and I wanted to find out who the Rosicrucians were. And as I explored more about who they were, and remember this is a time several years ago where there was no internet. You had to refer to libraries, you had to talk to friends, you had to talk to experts in the field. You had to find books that were obscure and esoteric. And in my search, I found that they started and worked together with the Freemasons. And the Freemasons were a secret order that were doing good around the world. And they were protecting a secret, a secret they didn't want the world to know. And later on, Dan Brown wrote his book, and et cetera, et cetera, and we found the secret was much more than we realize, and the Knights Templar from which began the Rosicrucians and, the, and of course the uh, Freemasons, gave us an idea of a fact that there might be a greater principle or a greater secret working within all of us, and in fact within the fabric of society, that we're not aware of. So I wanted to know what this secret was, and I searched. And I found out at an early age, 15, 16, 17, that there was a law called the law of correspondence. As within, so without. As above, so below. Simply stated, it sounds easy enough, but it's far more complex than that. As above means, as the heavens will it, or in some religions, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, heaven is where? Some people tell us it's between our ears, in our heads. You experience your heaven or your hell here on earth depending on what you think or your way of thinking or your way of feeling or what you experience or how you perceive your experience. And then later on, as I studied the world of psychology, which is really the study of the mind, the psyche, it began to be clear that a person's experience is fairly neutral. It could be raining outside. And one person could say, oh, this is terrible. It's a terrible day. I can't go out. I can't roll around in the grass. Everything will get wet. And da, 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 da. They'll come up with all kinds of reasons. And another person would say, wow, this is amazing. I don't have to wash my car today. I don't have to water the plants. And my God, doesn't everything smell fresh? So one event is neutral, but yet there were two different perceptions. For one, it became hell. For another, it became heaven. And I realized that these examples existed everywhere in society. As within, so without. What is your internal environment? What are you thinking about from the minute you wake up to the minute you fall asleep? What is your heaven and what is your hell? Your thoughts determine everything. And so the law of correspondence was far beyond the meta principle. It really was the beginning of everything. Did I, Mel Gill, believe that I had everything it took to put together a film and a book and make it a number one bestseller around the world? Yes, I did. I wasn't sure. I had doubts along the way. And most of those doubts appeared in this form of family and friends who said, are you all right? Why don't you come down to reality? Do what you do best. Get on radio. Heal people. Talk to people, do the da-da-da. Don't do this because you don't know how to make a film. And they were right, I didn't know how to make a film. But I learned very quickly along the way, expensive lessons along the way, but you know what? At the end of the day, I learned far more than most people would learn in a four-year degree program in making films. I know what not to do now because I've made all the mistakes necessary. At least 120 mistakes I've made. But did I fail 120 times? No. I found 120 ways how not to make a film. And I can teach somebody else this thing as well. As I wrote the book, I made probably about a thousand mistakes. But did I fail a thousand times? No. I found a thousand ways how not to write a lousy book. <laughs> and I put together this great book. Do I get better and better all the time? Yes. As within, so without. The American Indians, <clears throat> the Hopi Indians, wake up every day and they pray to the Great Spirit. And do you know what they ask? They say, oh Great Spirit, allow me today to make at least 20 mistakes. 
20 errors. People pray for errors. And yet our society and our school and all the people that we know that are wise tell us not to make mistakes. But they pray for mistakes. Because the belief within them is that learning does not happen until you make a mistake, until you fail. Allow us 20 failures today. Imagine if you woke up today and said to yourself, I want to have at least 20 failures today because I will learn from the failure. And then from the failures, obviously, you know not to repeat them. And then you will succeed in the end.